Welcome to the Deep Dive. We sift through the latest research, the big articles, the breakthroughs, really, to bring you what matters. Mm. Today, we're tackling something huge, HIV. It's been a major global health challenge for, what, over 40 years now? At least. And treatments, our heat and antiretroviral therapy, they've been incredible, truly life-saving. Absolutely. They've turned things around for millions. People live long, full lives now. Yeah. But, and this is the big but. It's never been a cure. Exactly. Not a cure. Because HIV has this uncanny ability to hide, to just disappear inside the body, making a real cure seem, well, almost impossible for the longest time. It's been the ultimate puzzle of this virus's stealth. It's frustrated researchers for decades, you know, resisting everything we threw at it in terms of complete eradication. And yet, that's why we're here today. There's some really exciting, potentially transformative news. Mm -hmm. It's a scientific breakthrough, which came out in 2025, from a team at the Peter Doherty Institute for Infection and Immunity in Melbourne, Australia. And they're using advanced mRNA technology, the same kind of tech we heard so much about with COVID vaccines, but in a totally new way. A really novel application. They're aiming to basically force HIV out of hiding, to flush it out from where it hides in the cells. Which was thought impossible, right? I mean, getting mRNA to do that in those specific cells. For a long time, yes. The scientific consensus was pretty much that you couldn't effectively deliver mRNA into those particular hidden reservoirs. The delivery mechanism was the roadblock. Okay, so that's our mission for this deep dive. We want to unpack this. How does this mRNA tech work in this context? Why did everyone think it couldn't work? And what does it actually mean for the future of an HIV cure and maybe even for medicine more broadly? Yeah, why does this breakthrough matter? And what could it mean for you listening right now? Let's get into it. So first things first, to really get why this is such a big deal, maybe we should quickly revisit why HIV has been so hard to cure in the first place. It's fundamental, really. HIV, the human immunodeficiency virus, it's incredibly insidious. It doesn't just attack the body. It targets the very cells meant to protect us. The immune system itself. Precisely. It goes straight for the CD4 T cells. These are like the generals of the immune system, helper T cells. They coordinate the whole defense strategy. Right. HIV gets inside them, turns them into virus factories, and replicates like crazy, which over time just decimates the immune system if it's not treated. Leading to AIDS. Leading to AIDS acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, where the body just can't fight off infections or cancers anymore. Okay, so that's the attack. But the hiding part, the reason art doesn't cure it, that's the reservoirs, yeah? Exactly. The hidden reservoirs, that's the absolute crux of the problem. Think of them like um, secret bunkers. Okay. Or maybe safe houses hidden throughout the body. They're usually within certain long-lived immune cells, like memory T cells. Cells that stick around for a long time. For years, potentially decades. Mm -hmm. And the virus gets inside, integrates its own genetic code into the cell's DNA, and just goes dormant, goes to sleep. So it's hiding in plain sight, basically. Completely invisible. <laughs> and crucially, invisible to current antiretroviral drugs. Yeah. RT works incredibly well on the active virus circulating in the blood. Right, it suppresses it. That's the whole undetectable equals untransmittable, the UU message, which is amazing. It is amazing. UU has transformed lives. It means someone on effective treatment with an undetectable viral load cannot transmit HIV. It allows people to live healthily, have families without that fear. It's a massive public health success. But it's management, not eradication. Exactly. Because that hidden virus, that blueprint tucked away in the reservoirs, it's just waiting. If someone stops taking their RT, the virus comes back. it wakes up, starts replicating again, and the viral load rebounds every time. So RT is a lifelong commitment. A true cure needs to get rid of those reservoirs completely. Flush out the bunkers. Flush out every last bunker. And that has been the Mount Everest of HIV research. Okay. Which brings us neatly to this potential game changer. mRNA technology. We all got familiar with mRNA because of COVID vaccines, Pfizer, Moderna. Mm -hmm. But maybe a super quick refresher. What is mRNA, basically? Yeah, sure. So messenger RNA, mRNA. Think of it like a temporary instruction sheet mm. or a recipe card. Okay. Our DNA holds the main blueprint, right? mRNA is like a photocopy of one specific instruction from that blueprint. It takes that instruction to the cell's protein-making machinery, yeah. the ribosomes. And tells them what to build? Tells them what protein to make. 
For the COVID vaccines, it told our cells to make a harmless bit of the virus's spike protein so our immune system could learn to recognize it. Got it. A set of instructions. Exactly. It's a way to temporarily program a cell to produce something specific. Very elegant, really, though getting it delivered reliably and safely has always been, you know, a bit of a challenge. Right. So the idea was, could we use mRNA to somehow target the hidden HIV? Mm -hmm. But you mentioned earlier there was this huge hurdle, something scientists thought was basically a deal breaker. Yeah, this was the core scientific problem. The specific immune cells where HIV likes to hide, those blood cells, they're just naturally resistant to the standard ways we had of delivering mRNA. How so? Well, the delivery system usually involves these things called lipid nanoparticles, LNPs, tiny fat bubbles, essentially, that carry the mRNA. Little delivery trucks. Kind of, yeah. Little delivery trucks. But the loading docks on these particular immune cells they just weren't compatible with the standard LNP trucks we were using. Yeah. The LNPs couldn't get taken up efficiently. So the instructions couldn't get inside the right cells? Pretty much. For years, it seemed like an insurmountable barrier. Like you had the message, but couldn't get it past the front door of the building you needed to reach. People thought it just wasn't going to work for these critical reservoir cells. Okay. Until this team in Melbourne, the Doherty Institute, mm -hmm. what did they do differently? How did they crack it? They didn't just tweak the delivery truck. They went back to the drawing board and designed a whole new one. Yeah, a completely novel type of LNP, one specifically engineered to be recognized and taken up by these previously hard-to-reach blood cells. Wow. So they built a truck with a key that actually worked for those specific doors. That's a good way to put it. And once inside, the mRNA delivered its instructions. And those instructions were basically, wake up the dormant HIV kick it out, make it visible again. So forcing the virus out of its hiding place. Exactly. A direct assault on the reservoir itself. It's a fundamentally different approach. That sounds huge. What was the reaction in the lab when they saw it working? I imagine it wasn't just, oh, that's nice. Oh, no. Apparently it was quite dramatic. Dr. Paula Saval, one of the lead researchers on the study, she said they initially thought the results were literally too good to be true. Wow. Disbelief. Complete disbelief. The kind that makes you double check everything. So they did. They repeated the experiments over and over meticulously. And they got the same results every single time. Consistent, reproducible. The new LNPs got in. The cells responded. The hidden HIV was activated. One of the team apparently called it a night and day difference. Night and day. Going from basically nothing working to this working incredibly well. Dr. Saval mentioned the team was in shock, gasping. You just don't hear that every day in science. No, you really don't. Shock, gasping. That says it all. It really feels like a potential turning point. It certainly has that feel, yes. A potential but, new era. Which leads to the big question. What does this actually mean for people living with HIV right now? What's the hope here? Okay, this is really important. First, the caveats. This is early stage lab research. Foundational discovery. Right, not in clinics yet. Definitely not. It needs years more testing. Animal studies first, then carefully controlled human trials. We need to ensure it's safe, that it works in the complexity of the human body, not just in a lab dish. Science takes time and safety is paramount. Absolutely. Critical point. So nobody should be stopping their RT based on this news. Absolutely not. Please keep taking your medication as prescribed. That is vital. But the hope. What is the hope this offers? The hope is real. This provides a scientifically plausible pathway towards an actual cure, not just managing HIV for life, but potentially eliminating it. Getting rid of it entirely. That's the goal. Imagine moving from daily pills to maybe, just maybe, a treatment perhaps given less frequently that could actually clear the reservoirs. It, it fundamentally changes the outlook. So distinguishing it from art. Art suppresses, keeps the virus undetectable, lets people live well, you know, but it's lifelong management. Correct. This new mRNA approach, the aim is different. It's designed to activate the hidden virus, drag it out of those reservoirs, right then. and then potentially the immune system could clear it, or maybe it would be combined with other therapies to eliminate those newly visible infected cells. It's about moving from containment to eradication. From management to cure. Yeah. That's the potential shift. That's the potential, yes. Transforming HIV from a chronic condition into something curable. It's a massive prospect. And thinking even bigger picture, if this keck works, if they've really figured out how to get mRNA into these tricky cells, mm -hmm. what else could that unlock? B. 
beyond HIV. Ah, now that's where it gets incredibly exciting, potentially revolutionary for medicine overall. How so? Well, if you have a reliable way to deliver instructions via mRNA into cell types that were previously off limits, that's like getting a whole new set of tools for biologists and doctors. Okay, like what kind of tools? Think about other diseases where things hide in cells. Mm -hmm. Other latent viruses, maybe, like certain herpes viruses or CMV, which can be big problems for people with weakened immune systems. Right. Or even think about some types of cancer. Could you deliver mRNA to specific cancer cells, instructing them to reveal themselves to the immune system? Or maybe even trigger their own self-destruction. Wow. So targeting specific cells with specific instruction. Exactly. The ability to precisely target and reprogram specific cells. It could open up therapeutic avenues we haven't even fully imagined yet across many different fields. It's potentially enormous. It really does feel like unlocking something fundamental. But let's bring it back down to earth a bit. The road ahead. What are the realistic challenges? It's not going to be next year, is it? Oh, definitely not. We have to be realistic. As promising as this is, it's step one of a very long journey. So what are the big hurdles? Several big ones. First, proving it works safely and effectively in humans. The human body is vastly more complex than lab models. Will the LMPs reach the right cells efficiently enough? Will they be cleared too quickly? Will there be off-target effects or immune reactions we didn't predict? Safety is number one. Of course. Then there's a whole manufacturing aspect. If it does prove successful, how do you scale up production of these novel LMPs in the mRNA reliably, consistently, and affordably enough to reach the millions who might need it? That's a huge logistical and economic challenge. So lots of work still to do. Years of work. Years of careful, rigorous work. But the direction is incredibly promising. And that quote from Dr. Saval really sticks with me. The never seen anything as good as what we are seeing now. Exactly. Coming from someone deep in the trenches of HIV cure research for years yeah. that carries immense weight. It signals genuine grounded optimism from the experts. It really does. OK, so we have this amazing potential future, maybe closer than ever. But for people listening right now today. Yeah. What's the takeaway? What's the most important thing? Hope is definitely real. Science yeah. is moving incredibly fast. But the single most important thing you can do for your health right now regarding HIV is testing and early detection. Knowing your status. Absolutely. The earlier HIV is diagnosed, the sooner you can start RT if needed. The sooner you get to undetectable, the better your long-term health and you protect others because you, you. It's still the cornerstone. Knowledge is power, especially here, taking that first step. It's the most empowering step you can take today while we wait for these future breakthroughs to hopefully become reality. So thinking about this breakthrough, this ability to potentially reach hidden targets, it, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? What other impossible challenges, maybe in other chronic diseases, maybe even cancers, might this kind of mRNA technology help unlock down the road? It's a fascinating question. It really underscores the power of scientific creativity and just sheer persistence. After more than 40 years, an end to the HIV epidemic feels, well, perhaps closer than ever here in 2025. And on that note of taking action now, if you or someone you care about needs testing confidential, quick, reliable HIV testing, we really encourage you to visit HIVRNATestGuide.com. We spell that out. HIVRNATestGuide.com. They connect you to over 4,500 testing centers all across the U.S. Testing is fast, it's affordable, and it's completely confidential. So please, take that step. Visit HIVRNATestGuide.com. Take control of your health today. This discovery is hope for the future, but action today is key. What a time for medical science.